One day, a certain bed bug crawled into the bed of a rich man and his beautiful young wife. That night, while the happy couple slept soundly, this bed bug crept softly and gently over their bodies and sucked small quantities of blood without ever disturbing them. It soon became apparent, however, that the wife's blood had a far superior flavor. Within a week, its delicate sweetness captivated the bed bug to the point of addiction. Never had he tasted anything like it, and he was convinced that every night, by some extraordinary good fortune, he fed upon a sleeping angel. Life continued thus as it does for happily dazed bed bugs everywhere, until one day he met a handsome flea. This flea hopped off the back of one of the rich man's dogs that passed by the bed. Ho, ho, the flea called out when he spied the bed bug hidden between the sheets. Is this your pitch then, mate? It is indeed, replied the bed bug, and a very good one too. And now, good sir, what can I do for you? Well, you see, it's like this, begins the flea. I thought I'd do a little bit of exploring, you know, and see the world and stuff like that. So I'm traveling, you see, moving about and so on. And I was wondering, friend, now that I'm here, if you'd be kind enough to put me up for the night. I'd be ever so grateful. Why, of course you can stay, said the bed bug. We'll feast together tonight when the humans come to sleep. If you've been living off dog's body recently, I think you'll find the young female's blood something rather special. It's a tender blood, sweet, yet with the invigorating whiff of an avenging angel, if you know what I mean. Devilish stuff, really. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Well, that's very decent of you, mate, said the flea. Thanks very much. And so, having quickly made friendly contact, the two insects settle down in the bedclothes for an amicable conversation that seems to pass extremely swiftly, though in fact it lasts for several hours. By the time man and wife arrive between the sheets, both flea and bedbug have talked themselves silly and are very hungry. No sooner does the flea sniff the wife's exquisite body odor, her fine muskiness ravishing his senses, then his rear legs twitch convulsively, and he inadvertently gives several tiny hops in quivering anticipation. Shh, whispers the bed bug urgently. We must wait until they fall asleep. Shh. I know, I know, the flea calls back. It's just that I'm famished, and she smells even better than you said. Yet he manages to control himself somewhat, and soon... The couple are asleep. Bedbug and flea now vigorously assail the delicious wife. But while the bedbug creeps about softly and gently, slipping the needle of his hollow feed tube very carefully into the wife's skin, the flea goes berserk with repeated bites that raise broad spots like pimples as red as a rose. Oh, he bites her ivory thighs and gnaws her milky breasts. He nips her delicate throat and chews her lovely buttocks. And so ravenously pretty plays her sweet carcass with his painful pinches that she wakes and feels with her fingers the awful bumps that now blemish her silky skin. Husband, husband, she calls out softly and gives her snoring spouse a shake awake. Something has bitten me. Something nasty is in the bed. What? He answers, half asleep. Bitten by a nasty bed? No, no, his wife corrects him. Vermin, bugs, insects, spiders, lice. I don't know which, but please light the candle quickly. I cannot bear this misery any longer. Dutifully, he lights the candle and calls for the chambermaid to come and help. Moments later, the three of them yank back the covers and carefully inspect the bed. At the first glimmer of light, the flea takes four mighty springs and escapes right across the room without being seen. But the bed bug, ah, the bed bug, is too slow and is caught skulking under a fold in the sheets. Aha, 
exclaims the husband as he plucks up the bed bug between two fingers. Here's the culprit, my dear, he says, and thrusts the poor, miserable bed bug under his wife's nose. Ah, ah, she cries out in shock and bursts into a sudden flood of tears. Her husband hands the bed bug to the chambermaid and reaches over to comfort his wife. There, there, he says tenderly, and folds her in his arms. It's all right, my dear. It's all over. Meanwhile, none of the humans can hear the bedbug's pitiful cries of innocence. It was the flea. It wasn't me. It was the flea. It wasn't me. He screeches this out helplessly from between the maid's two fingers, but his cries are useless. And very soon, the maid's sharp fingernails begin to press steadily into both sides of his plump little body until he splits apart in such a revoltingly messy way that it would be disgusting to describe it any further. <laughs>